Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Every subset of a countable set is countable. Now, before we get into the proof, let's get some context. First of all, what does it mean for a set to be countable? Well, given any set A, we say that A is countable if either A is finite or denumerable. What does it mean for A to be denumerable? It means that there is a bijection from the positive integers to A. Now, in proving this theorem, we are going to rely on two facts regarding countable sets. The first is, given any two sets, C and D, if D is countable and is a bijection from C to D, then C is also countable. And the second fact is, given any set C, if C is a subset of the positive integers, then C is countable. Okay, now let's get into the proof. To start out the proof, let's give ourselves a countable set A. And what we're trying to prove here is that every subset of A is also countable. So since we're trying to prove a statement about every subset of A, give me an arbitrary subset of A. I'll call it B. The whole goal is to show that B is countable. Now, to do so, we're going to break this up into two cases. Well, since A is countable, we have that either A is finite or A is denumerable. And so we're going to prove in either case, we have that B is countable. Let's we'll start with case one, where A is finite. Well, in this case, since A is finite and B is a subset of A, we know that every subset of a finite set is finite. So B is finite. And now, since B is finite, we have that either B is finite or denumerable. So by definition, B is countable. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. So this completes case one. Now let's move on to case two, where A is denumerable. Now, since A is denumerable, this means that there's a bijection from the positive integers to A. Now, it turns out, given any two sets, A and B, if there's a bijection from A to B, then there's a bijection from B to A. So we're perfectly fine to swap these two around. So there's a bijection from A to the positive integers. And let me call that bijection F. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to restrict the domain of F to the domain B. And this is what we call the restriction of F to B. And to review how these work, let's say in general we have a function F from A to B and C is a subset of A. Well then, the restriction of F to C is a function from C to B. And the way this works is, for every element x in c, the restriction of f to c evaluated at x is equal to f evaluated at x. Right, so f and the restriction of f to c do essentially the same thing. The only difference is, is that the restriction of f to c has a smaller domain. And so, yeah. Now it turns out, if f is injective, then the restriction of f to c is also injective. And now check this out. Since f is a bijection, of course f is injective. Well, since f is injective, we have that the restriction of f to b is also injective. Now, every function is surjective to its range. So, the restriction of f to b is surjective to its range. And for convenience, I'll call the range of the restriction of f to b j. So what does this mean? Well, if we think of the restriction of f to b as a function from b to j, then yeah, the restriction of f to b is a bijection from b to j. Because the restriction of f to b is both injective and it is surjective to j. 
So there exists a bijection from B to J. Now, it's not a surprise that the range of the restriction of F to B is a subset of the range of F. And I'll leave that up to you guys to verify. And the range of the restriction of F to B is equal to J, and the range of F is equal to the set of positive integers. So really, J is a subset of the positive integers. Well, we know that every subset of the positive integers is a countable set. So J is a countable set. Well, since J is countable and is a bijection from B to J, we have by our first fact regarding countable sets that B is countable. And so, in either case, we have shown that B is countable. So putting this together, we gave ourselves an arbitrary subset of A and found that it's countable. So every subset of A is countable. So given any countable set, every subset of that countable set is countable. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.